class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Marie Hunsinger and today we'll be talking about social interaction. So as humans, we are social animals, which means we spend a majority of our time with other people, either online or face-to-face -face or over the phone. A social interaction is an exchange between two or more individuals and is a building block for society. So social interaction is how we form relationships, transmit culture, achieve goals, and it's also a place where we experience conflict. So by interacting with other people, we decide on the rules of society, how to get things done, the design of society. And social interaction uh, is comprised of both verbal and nonverbal communication. So of course you know what verbal communication is, it's the words that you speak, but what are some forms of nonverbal communication? And some argue we actually spend uh, more time or mo much of our conversation is nonverbal compared to verbal. So for example, I might say, I am really happy to see you today and my nonverbals match my verbals. But I might say, I'm really happy to see you today. Well, based on my body language, my facial expressions, and my tone, you might be skeptical of what I'm saying is the truth. So some forms of nonverbal communication include touch, paralinguistics, which includes your pitch, the loudness of your voice, the emphasis on certain syllables, the frequency, length of hesitations, also filler words that you might use, such as um, uh, like, right, you know. Uh, it also includes your body language, so this is gestures, your facial expressions, um, and you must be careful of different gestures depending on uh, the culture that you're interacting with because in some cultures this might mean okay, for example in ours, in another culture this might mean something obscene. And I won't tell you what it means, you can look that up on the internet on your own time, but uh, just, just be wary of, of gestures. And also your use of personal space. This can vary by culture, gender, and closeness of relationship. So um, Americans tend to like to have a, a big, we call it a proxemic bubble, um, whereas in other cultures, they stand more closely together. Irving Goffman was a, a symbolic interactionist, and he came up with the term dramaturgical analysis. And what this means is he so that human interaction is kind of like acting in a play. And with a backstage, a front stage, props, a setting, and when we interact, we're playing a role. And the goal is to create the best impression possible for your audience. And so take, for example, a first date. The backstage is where you can relax. And this is where maybe you get ready for your date, you're doing your hair, uh, you're doing your makeup if that's applicable. Uh, maybe you're practicing what kind of questions you might ask your date. And that's, the, that's where you're off. And then the front stage, that is when you're performing for your audience. So that is when you're actually on, on stage, so to speak, or on the date. And this is where you're trying to manipulate your date's impressions. And then, again, when you get home from the date, you get to relax and you get to go back to being in your backstage. And so for Goffman, it says that there's not just one version of yourself. We play different roles depending on our audience. So if you ever heard of that phrase, know your audience, that's what he's talking about. So you might say a dirty joke to your you know, friends from college, but you wouldn't say that to your grandmother because you know your audience, unless you know, she happens to be into that sort of thing. Uh, so what goes along with dramaturgical analysis is this term called impression management, which is how one manipulates and watches their behavior in order to adjust to people's expectations. And so, for example, there's, there's ways that we manage our impressions all the time when we first meet someone or when we're continuing interactions. For example, have you noticed that I don't have any spinach in my teeth? That's because I made sure to check before I came on video. That's a form of impression management. So impression management can include the language that we use, the clothes that we wear, uh, our nonverbals like smiling. Oftentimes when we're performing and we're on front stage, something embarrassing might happen to us that's not planned. And then we must do this process called restoring face. And this is when you provide an explanation or uh, a reason for your embarrassment. So for example, if I'm walking down the street, I bend over, I split my pants, 
I might provide an explanation. Oh gosh, this cheap brand that I bought, I should have invested in the name brand pants. Um, and most of the time the audience is invested in helping you restore face because it's awkward for everyone when you do something embarrassing. So typically the audience goes along with it. Okay, so let's talk about relationships. So we spend a lot of our time with other people. Uh, what holds or breaks up relationships? Uh, human relationships are patterned and predictable, right? So some people may say, well, all relationships are different and they're unique snowflakes and you know there's no pattern to them. Well, sociologists would say, wrong. There are patterns to relationships. What is interpersonal attraction? Well, that is related to how much one likes someone, dislikes someone, or feels indifferent towards someone. So for relationships, for sociologists, we are interested in this term called homophily, which refers to the tendency for people to have uh, positive or at least neutral ties with people who are socially similar to themselves in significant ways. So think about your friend group. Think about the people that you choose to date. Typically, we're, we associate with people who have similar social backgrounds. Uh, similar social classes, similar levels of education, perhaps um, uh, religious or political views. Uh, so the term opposites attract, well, maybe, but uh, for sociologists, the term birds of a feather flock together is much more salient. The matching hypothesis claims that people are more likely to form relationships with people who are socially similar to them or socially desirable. So for example, uh, people who are very good looking, like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, they tend to get together and date. Or people who might be very good looking or have other desirable attributes like money or wealth may uh, date someone who is desirable in another way. Uh, for example, um, are famous or have youth. Some other theories in regards to relationships is this propinquity effect, uh, which means that we tend to interact with and form relationships with people that we see on a regular basis. So uh, a, a study was done of an apartment building with two floors and they found that people were much more likely to build friendships and to date people who were on the same floor, even if they all inhabited the same building. And so the more we see someone, if we had a, a positive or neutral interaction with them, the more warm feelings we, tour, we tend to um, evolve for them over time, unless we see them too much. So there is a threshold. <laughs> Also, social exchange theory uh, suggests that people tend to view relationships as a give and take, and you want to get out of a relationship as much as you're putting in. So, for example, uh, if you are providing the monetary resources in a romantic relationship, and the other person is providing domestic care or emotional support or sexual support, then that might be an evenly matched relationship. However, we're constantly evaluating, am I getting as much into this friendship as I'm getting out, or am I getting as much into this romantic relationship as I'm getting out? And it sounds cold and calculating, but you can see how people do this when they decide to break up with a friend or a spouse or a partner. Online interaction. So people are on today are on average online for about 24 hours a week, which is twice as long as 10 years ago, with one in five adults spending as much as 40 hours a week on the internet. So of course this has changed the way that we interact with people. And people can, and certainly do, try to manage their impressions online. So what are some ways that you manage your impression online? Perhaps you watch what you post on Facebook uh, when you know that you have your boss uh, as a friend or your grandmother. Uh, maybe you untag on flattering photos of yourself or try to delete that old social media profile from when you were in middle school. Also, the internet um, provides an opportunity for anonymity, which means that people tend to be more cruel or take more risks than they would normally face to face with someone. So we're also interested in how online dating has changed the game uh, as far as finding romantic partners. So compared to, you know, even 15, 20 years ago where online dating was seen as stigmatized and only something desperate people do, more and more people find their partners online. So one in five online daters have asked someone to help them with their profile. So you might ask a close friend or family to review um, your profile to make sure it's a flattering picture that you're getting across the, the image that you want. And 5% of Ameri Americans who are now in a marriage say that they met their 
a spouse online. And I'm actually one of them. So I met my husband on the dating website OkCupid back in 2014. And what I found was valuable about this process was I was able to assess uh, education level, political affiliation, uh, religious affiliation, as well as um, different personality traits before I even went on a date. And so you can kind of get a feel for someone and see if it's a match before you even uh, have to invest that time. Whereas at a bar, you really don't know who you're meeting, right? Of course, people don't always represent themselves truthfully online, so that's something to be aware of as well. Of course, and some people use online dating websites and never actually go on a face-to-face -face date. Uh, perhaps they use it to, as a self-esteem booster, as some people do with sites like Tinder. For social scientists, uh, we have become really interested in this blog called OK Trends, which is actually the, the dating website I was talking about, OKCupid, was able to gather all of this data from its users and able to answer some questions about dating, modern dating, that uh, people might not always be honest about. For example, do people have racial preferences? And typically they found that yes, people do. They might not say that they do, but people tend to, uh, women want to date within their own race and men tend to uh, prefer white and Asian women. Also age, men, uh, women tend to prefer to date men around their same age, but, and this might be shocking to you, men tend to want to date women who are much, much younger. And so, They've compiled all of this information and they were able to find uh, certain research trends such as how do you get someone to respond to your message? So what they found is that the ideal character count is between 40 and 90 characters and you want to address something personal within their profile that doesn't relate to their physical looks. Uh, for example, maybe a movie that they listed or a hobby. Um, and also, people tend to lie about things like their height. <laughs> For example, if you meet someone who says that they're six foot tall on a dating website, when you go to meet them in real life, don't be surprised if they're actually more like 5'10". Um, so, okay, Cupid has come under fire recently though because they collected this data without their users' permission or informed consent, which we learned about and when we talked about research methods is an unethical way to practice research. However, it is a cool way for social scientists to look at some modern dating trends. So in conclusion, we are social animals and much of our time is spent with other people. We are invested in managing our impressions and trying to have the best impression possible with other people. Opposites may attract, but we're way more likely to marry someone who is socially similar to us in age, race, um, social class, education, political status, affiliation. And more and more people are meeting romantic partners online and more and more people are spending uh, time with other people online. So thanks for watching and I look forward to diving into next week's topic. Bye.